Micah, I have a scenario for you. You have been teleported into a maze. All of your power, all of your weapons, all of your armor has now been removed. And you now have to navigate this maze. And on the other end of this maze is the treasure that will bring back your lost love. Now, there are many traps laden within this maze, including pitfalls, easy, spike traps, no problem, and chimpanzees. M Micah, Micah, um, hmm. I guess the hero has fled. Okay, Nick, I have a scenario for you. You're in a maze, and on the other end of this maze is the treasure that will bring back your lost love. I don't want that. You're ruining my campaign, guys! <laughs> Alright, so... <laughs> That's why a session zero is important. <laughs> <laughs> Very much so. So, yes, it's been a while since we have done these, and I figured, hey, to get us back into the groove of doing it, we do a little bit of, little bit of a campaign uh campaign pre uh you know pre-op there you know see see what how we all felt playing together and uh found i i could i i knew chimpanzees would be just a little bit much and i'm sorry Maybe about this that. is why i'm the dungeon master that's true yeah because <laughs> not you <laughs> yeah true because i i've never ran a campaign before and honestly i'd, I'd be afraid to run a campaign because I'm afraid I would make it too difficult and everyone would either like quit, never come back, or die. Well, I worry about that to an extent, but they I... have pretty decent guidelines for how to balance stuff in the books. So. I've had plenty of characters die. I'm, I mean, it happens. Yeah, mm. I mean, you just re-roll if they do. Shit happens sometimes. That's part of it. That's why I was telling you when we were watching Vox Machina, I was like, the thing about this is... Any of these characters could meet an unfortunate end at any time because that's just the nature of. And that's exactly what happened in season two. With Except the... for they managed to avert it somehow. Like, well, yeah, they well, did. Well, they reversed it. That's what they did. Well, it's because, I mean, Laura literally was just like, just grief struck because she just lost a character she'd been playing for what, like three or four years at that point. Mm. I had to go back and apologize because I was like, yeah, that was my least favorite character. Oh, no. And then, like, I watched their campaign and, like, how it went to everybody. And I was like, I shouldn't have said that. I <laughs> didn't register in my head that these were characters that people created and had great attachments to. That was well, really I mean, but some, not not empathetic of me. Well, some, <laughs> some resonate with you and some don't. I yeah. mean, the, I there was one time in a campaign. My buddy started out with one, and his character was getting on everybody's nerves. And I was like... Bro, I was like, dude. I was like, I, you could play your character, but I'm not gonna save you from everyone else when they decide to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Argo was telling me last night that there was apparently a character in Baldur's Gate one that the devs put there specifically to annoy the living crap out of you, but oh they 100% made it so that anytime you feel like you can just murder him and be done with him. <laughs> like that's what their yeah, intention like, was. Wait, wait, that, Basically to see option? how long you could last before you decided you were murdering that guy. <laughs> like, wait, that's an option? And apparently awesome. in Baldur's Gate 3, his descendant's going to be in the game. So. <laughs> God. So today we're going to be doing a few things. We're going to be doing uh, three. Uh, we're going to be doing three more of the Crap Guide D&D 5th Edition by Joe Cap. We're going to be doing Artificer, or Artificer, or Arti... Yeah, I, the, depending on how you want to say it. it I, is, I have trouble pronouncing that class. I don't know how it's supposed to be pronounced. I don't know how I want to pronounce it, and my brain won't even do it right the way I, I want it to half the time. I always want to say Artificer. And I always want to say Artificer, even though that's not how it's spelled, but Artificer is like what I feel like I want to pronounce it like, but I'll end up being like Artificer. Arti 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 yeah, the yeah. art guy. Yeah, and then of course we also have races and goblins. So we're just gonna jump on in, and we're going to uh, check out Artificer or Artificer, however you want to pronounce it. So uh, I guarantee you, there's gonna be an argument down in the comment section on how it's going to be said. I hope so because I I want to know how to say it. Yeah, and it's one of those things that, despite 
me having trouble with it or something. I just never looked into how it was supposed to be said. Hmm. Fair. But, alright. Crap Guide to D&D, 5th Edition. Here we go. A wise man once said, magic is dumb and stupid and makes no sense. And I trust that man. He wields a sword and a shield. So why use magic when you can use big brain energy and the power of science? And I know how much nerds love science so much that they won't shut up about it and one day start making weird advances towards their Texas instrument. Listen, we all have our urges, but seriously, get a server room. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. &D. <laughs> It's about damn time we got another intelligence caster. The stat is about as commonly used for spell casting as your bedroom is used for sexy times. The artificer is an inventor who decided traditional magical means by accomplished wizards and scholars are too mainstream and decided to come up with their own magic spells and items after reading two articles by angry moms from Baldur's Gate who discovered casting real spells can actually give you genital flumps. Checkmate sorcerers. Instead of that, you can tinker with items to imbue them with special properties like turning it into a flashlight, turning it into a scented candle, or turning it into a phone that can only record and play vines. The best part is that Aww. once you give the item the properties, it lasts forever so go have fun enjoying your seven seconds of fame before the service shuts down and you become a struggling vlogger and speaking of messing with the natural <laughs> properties of items as you level up you gain infusions which allow you to turn that sex toy you hide in the dresser from a basic vibrator to a vibrator infusions include but are not limited to boring stat increase thor's hammer item dupe glitch and go go gadget blink a boot <laughs> this is all due to your massive iq nice. rating of 20 billion which is so high you can add your intelligence modifier to any of you or your ally party members dice rolls and become the ultimate backseat gamer telling them about the bad guy's weak spots because there's no way they're simple minds could have figured it out on their own. And if that doesn't work out, you can use one of the 50 magical items you've made yourself and refuse to part with like someone on an episode of Hoarders, or pull a fast one and throw the magical vibrator that you secretly stored a charge of fireball in. Being the new class that <laughs> it is, the Artificer only has three subclasses so far, and no, I'm not going to cover the new ones that come out. Stop asking, I just want to go on vacation with my sword and shield already. The Alchemist <laughs> is like a drunk doctor and gains a few healing spells, can buff allies with the power of drinking and gambling, and can help you grow closer bonds with your pets. No! If you want to beat the power of gun, the Arch no! <laughs> Brother, why? <laughs> Stop it! Because we're like most of the fan base for that show, some of us are assholes about that. And that's that's it's okay. mostly because we didn't watch the show until recently. Because <laughs> we just like we laugh at your pain. Uh, create an eldritch cannon that can either fire three different kinds of artillery or just sit there contributing nothing while you marvel at your amazing craftsmanship because keeping track of more than one thing on the board is hard isn't that right dungeon master and lastly the battlesmith where you decide to stop being a puss baby and join the fight with a mystery solving robo dog sidekick <laughs> a ranger overall the artificer loves making finding and using loads and loads of magical items which means you'll probably forget about half of your inventions because players can't be trusted to even remember the items they started with at the beginning of the campaign just make sure to keep them under good security <laughs> so the rogue doesn't steal them all while you're long rest and suddenly you wake up to the sound of Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Now you know how to play Artificer. You're welcome. Okay. So. It's pretty close to what I gathered that class was kind of like, even though I've never really seen anybody play it. No. Uh, my buddy that played it was uh, Armor <clears throat> and uh, literally became Iron Man. Just an oh. anthropomorphic turtle that was Iron Man. Nice. Yeah. Iron They're really turtle. hard to deal with, actually. Iron Turtle. Yeah. Bam! Sorry. So, now we move on to races. Wow, this is going to be a touchy subject. So you picked your class, hold on to your ass, it's gonna get crass cause race is part of the role you can play. Some sentient clay, a he she or they, a beast who gets real snarly, a regular dude named Charlie. If homebrew is free, a big talking tree, welcome to a crap guy to D&D. Oh, that intro Arrowhawk song was remixed a little bird. bit. Oh, cool. it's still going. Got some wings so you can fly, and if non-weapon melees prefer, they get sharp talents to bit scratch a guy. Or maybe you're more of an Asimar, still avian, if you lower the bar. Angelic people with radiant energy or darkness if you flap your wings edgily. Bugbears aren't actually bears at all, more like beastly orcs and just as tall, but oddly sneaky and your arms are long, so you're really freaking good at playing basketball. But if going full <laughs> beast is a little too far, you could always do half and decide to be a centaur, charging the enemies so they can readily get steadily back up while you stomp on them deadly. For sneaky bunch, changeling's cool, you make a disguise, get a worthless tool, you can change your face to whatever race, there's nearly no limit who you can fool. Dragonborn, no, not the Skyrim kind, are likely the kid of a bard that'll find dragons really hot, so now you shoot ass or whatever other color your parents preferred asses. The typical dwarf <laughs> with a beautiful beard, you work with your hands and are physically sturdy. You seem informed about rocks, which is weird, try not to obsess or the sesh will get wordy. Elves are papa's pricks, a dozen flavors to match and mix, they live a long time, don't sleep in said trance, and are hard to be charmed, so bards keep it in your pants. Pick a fear bulk, a chill-ass cow, most of which have 
Druidic vow, and don't ask how, but they can turn invisible, which is a big concern. Janassi, elemental genie bastards, one of four elements that they have mastered in some way, lets them do cool shit like water bend or have a five breathing armpit. Gith Yankee, <laughs> Gith Zarai, elves that look like they want to die, all they're about is how they clash. Been around 40 years and their lore still trash. Short stack, 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 Gnome, stack, happy stack. short folk who are smart and wise and cunning and know how to crack, crack, crack in the good crack. camouflage, be it sneaking or magic or cool roguish montage. Whack, whack, is whack, the goblin, whack. small size hits hard on your noggin. Their nimbleness makes it hard to keep pace, they'll hide and bide, quick slide and hit your face. Muscles are in, though I have bias, so the hottest IMO is Goliath. <coughs> They're eight feet tall, have steel for their balls, and can shrug off damage like one man riots. Half elves, the mutts and mules of DD. Extra points to spend on two abilities and skills out the ass. It's the best of both races, and backstories usually come from stupid places. Half orc, like I said, muscles are in. You're a ruthless brute who fights to win. Your crits get crits, and you can terrify. And if you feel like it, you can say no when you die. If your luck is nasty, the halfling's good. You re roll ones and win like you should, and you're hard to scare, so go party with a dragon, and you can slip through if it's angry off the flag. And humans get a little bit of everything. They lack gimmicks or special flair or anything, and are all around average. You know how it is, and the perfect pick if you're boring. Races, <laughs> all the races. Races, all the races. There's plenty. Uh, I'm sorry, but him saying races. The, yeah, I'm just like, I'm hearing in my head. I'm hearing, I'm hearing racists. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, racist. I like playing as a human, honestly. I do too. Just because, honestly, it, your backstory—if you do—if you craft it well, you can make yourself more interesting than you know any any ra other race that you can play. I mean, it's you, also the easiest role-playing difficulty because you don't really have to think about the fact that you're some sort of mythical being. That's true. Like when you're role-playing. I mean, just <laughs> mechanically, like they usually, you can usually start out with an extra feat on top of everybody else. And I mean, if you stack your feats, you can clean house. Nice. Just pay attention to those of you that have a foot fetish. Extra feats. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of one foot, you have two feet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To choose from too many, so come witness the list of this guy to all of the races. All the races. Turtle. Turtle Hot goblin. They trust in a code, be it God or communism or giant toad, they're a prideful chode. So whenever you fail, the more watch or retry means you go beast mode. If you're an edgy avian, kenku sneaky, agile and crafty and can easily lie. They can mimic voices to be a bit cheeky, too bad they get bullied because they can't fly. The cobalt is a mischievous one, they hate bright light and there's often more than one. They can trick dumb fools and steal their jewels, but ganging up together can be pretty fun. Guess it's scaly hours, cause lizard folk have sticks up their ass and can't take a joke. They can bite and craft and stay a while underwater and have hard ass scales to block cannon fodder. Loxidon are straight up elephants, they're large size and take and make them dense. Got trunks to smell and are wise and mostly merry, but piss one off and you'll see they're damn scary. Wanna breathe underwater? Lokatha is a fish. A straight up fish. Literally, just a fish. Your armor starts high and get tons of resistance. Stay dry and you die. You're still just a fish. Big beastly <laughs> bull is a minotaur. Got horns to charge. If you run pretty far, make them shit their pants while you're at it. Being big and scary is a habit. Speaking of orcs, superstitious and strong, but also often wrong with a minus two to int. That's okay, so to say, you're aggressive and massive. Got angry parents means they're rarely passive. Cat girls rejoice. Tabaxi is here. Obsessed with stuff and quite the sightseer. Fast like a cat, get claws and climb Far. Tons of coats like leopard, tiger, and jaguar. Tieflings a demon with a lot of looks. They're horny and hot and often a provoker in the lore anyway. A lot of hate. It's normal, I guess, when you're a panty soaker. If you want to be a big <laughs> reptilian who's strong and hardy, then Tortle has a shell that's AC's a million. So have fun being a hermit immortal. Triton is just an aquatic elf who evolved itself in the continental shelf. And you're basically Aquaman. Fish can understand you. No, they won't do your laundry just because you demand to. The Verdon, like a goblin, but pretentious. Mind powers that make mystics contentious. Bunch of passive shit. What is this, peace hour? Come back and talk to me when you learn real power. You want to pure blood like humans, but snaky. Never make a date with one, I hear they're flaky. Manipulate a bunch with magic resistance. Don't take their oral offer, no matter the persistence. Fair human mix is the Kalishtar. Got a lot of mind shit that's really bizarre, like telepathy. Dream protectively, like angels if they couldn't be effectively. The shifters, like a half lycanthrope, with four different types with exclusive features. You can't transform, at least not fully, so you often look more like a freakish creature. Simic hybrids are a random fusion of aquatic things, like a squid or a crab. Gain bonuses, depending I haven't heard on which of these last so few. pincers for new ways to stab. Warforge, robots, forge for war, don't have to eat. Or from, sleeper, uh, uh, the Eberron setting and the Ravnica setting, so they're not like hmm. more the mainstream. I mean, it's awesome that he's covering basically all the known ones, like that are 
breathe and what's more is your tanky as well being hard to steal the only downside is you'll never truly feel the dalkin tells us nobody's perfect look like navi people without the long neck they get lots of bonuses the smarts not shocking good luck ever getting one to stop talking and that's the lot and always remember class race importance is pretty seldom use whatever you fancy make a chubby fighter dancing now you know how to pick your race you're welcome <laughs> That was. I like that. There's there's an insane amount of playable races now in fifth edition. Nice. It's, Are all of those just in the default book or? Um. So, basically, the latest set they released it has um, Monsters of the Multiverse, where they compiled like every race you can play. Um. So, like original player's handbook, you only have like, like five or six maybe. Like the basics. Yeah. Basically. And so it's it's grown a lot. Um, it's like I'm always kind of conflicted. Like if I'm gonna write a campaign, like part of me kind of wants to just go through the list and sort of pick and choose ones that I think would fit with the lore of whatever mm -hmm. place that I'm trying to set it or whatever. But at the same time, I'm like I kind of like the idea of giving the players the freedom of choice of whatever they want and then writing around that to an extent too. But at the same time, I feel like that could be more difficult. Um. Well, I think that's a yes and. So, like, some of them have a specific setting, like Ravenloft, where it's, like, basically, it's, like, these dilapidated human villages, maybe, mm -hmm. like, an elf or a dwarf here and there, but for the most part, it's, like, a, you know, it's, like, Bram Stoker's Dracula-type setting. Okay. You know? And so they would stick out, like, a sore thumb, but that's part of, you know, the roleplay opportunity. Whereas, you know, some settings is, like, literally there's everybody here. Nobody cares. Yeah. But that's something you always go over in session zero, so I mean yeah. mm -hmm. All right. It's like putting chimps in there. <laughs> okay, and I said uh, and uh, look. Now we understand like the feeling out period yeah, of like this. Yeah. It's like, okay, no chimps. Just, just like we show up to your, you know, sea <laughs> ship based campaign and we're fighting giant sharks all the time and Nick's That's him. Out. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's why yeah. It's session zero, you figure that out. It's like, okay, no sharks, no chimps. Where's the line? And no aquatic chimps either. God dang it! It's like a merchant uh, leaps up on the ship. What is this? And it's like running on its arms with like a fish tail. No, 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 no chimps. No, no chimps. Sharps no. or sharps or 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 charks. No charks. Charks or. Shark Zamzis. Yeah. I, I I don't know. Anyway, uh, this is goblins. Yeah, jokes on me. The entire setting is just Junji Ito's Go. God. Yeah, fish with legs. Uh, anyway. It's not just fish after all. Sharks. Around. Yeah, it's everything with legs. It starts to be people with <laughs> extra legs. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here we go. What's bad. wrong, you pathetic, sad, procrastinating dungeon master? Can't come up with a worthwhile and interesting combat encounter and you only have half an hour before the session because you spent the last week fascinating about a totally different campaign you wish to run one day but ultimately know you never will because you're in a constant state of prep work and insecurity? That's Whoa. okay, everybody knows no matter- Dude. Oh, wow. Vicious. I get personal. Fuck. <laughs> no matter how basic the combat is, it's going to take forever anyway thanks to any spellcasters and people on their phones and is mostly just a chance for the DM to stall for time while they figure out the next story beats. That and an excuse to show off whatever art of the thing the players are fighting that the DM paid three grand in commissions or miniatures to make for them. <laughs> or you could just grab whatever the nearest thing on your shelf is and say, fuck it, we're fighting this little bastard today. Welcome to a crap guide to D&D. &D. <laughs> Goblin! Goblins are one of the most iconic creatures in Dungeons and Dragons, famous for being low and mid-level cannon fodder, having the respawn rate of a seahorse playing Call of Duty, and being overall superior to kobolds in every way. Goblins are what you default to when you have no idea what the party should be fighting because they're just so splattered all over the realm that everyone just accepts that they can show up anywhere. Alright, got myself some milk and cookies for some hunts, and I'll open the fridge and put the milk back where it went, and close the fridge and go... 
milk. God, Jesus, what the fuck? Goblins were originally <laughs> created by the hobgoblins, who one day got really lazy and decided to make a generation of poor saps that they could shove all their baggage onto and then blame for when the economy they don't have a say in gets destroyed. This has sort of evolved into how goblins mostly live in tribes where the biggest asshole is the leader and everybody else is just sort of used to being treated as poorly as a retail worker. That's not to say all goblins are meek little green muppets. Given enough size and numbers and time to prepare an ambush and even the most basic goblin squads can turn an 8th level party into the aftermath of eating at White Castle. This is because goblins are a culture constantly raiding like they're trying to get world first and have a knack for throwing them. <laughs> Lyra! I was going to say, this goblin clan, what's, which, which goblin clan is it? The Leroy clan. Oh god! Well, he was just talking about, like, them planning ambushes, turning people into the aftermath of White Castle reminds me of how the, that, that's probably what the uh, creator of Goblin Slayer had in mind. Oh, yeah. I mean... It's like, what if I had goblins that were actually, like, pretty terrifying? I was gonna say, does that include, like, the one person in, like, the initial, like, campaign? You know, the, the, the monk, uh, like, the monk lady who... Yeah, wound up getting, um... Do you want this video to be monetized, or do you want to keep talking about Goblin Slayer? You brought it up. I just brought up the series. I didn't have any great details of what happens. Like. <laughs> have you watched Goblin Slayer? Yeah, I, I have. I, I stopped, because I watched that first episode, I was like, this is not for me. Okay, so I'm going to tell you after the first well, episode... I did. I've watched everything now. Yeah, I've oh, pushed okay, through it. Yeah. Okay. I was, yeah, I was um, going to say, like, it, actually, it's not actually, as bad after the first I actually first episode. really enjoyed it, but I was like, yeah, that was... Well, I was going to say, they had to set up a horrific scenario for yeah. Goblin Slayer to, like, like, come in and just basically be like, yeah, this is normal. I mean, come on, dude. It's one of the most nightmarish scenarios I think an adventuring party could ever come across. Oh, you know, yeah, for, for sure. Trapped underground, poisoned, and, like, nothing that you do is working because you've never done this before, because you've never, you know, adventured like that before. I, mean, I still like the one lady that they found later that was, like, the situation where you thought she was going to be, like, kill me, but she's, like, kill all of these bastards, basically. I yes. was like, yeah. Yeah. It's like, that's Themselves a badass the lady, despite all this horrible shit that's happened to her. Mm-hmm. First thing they see that looks like they could potentially bite its ear off. They're no. also somewhat smart. Leaders of goblin tribes consistently right. placing first in tournaments of Connect Four, and the race as a whole frequently mounting and fighting alongside creatures such as wargs, which are oversized wolves that are perpetually angry as people keep stealing their art off Instagram. If you ever decide to play as a goblin, you'll receive a little bit of dex and con from being agile and resilient little gremlins, and the ability to quickly pussy out of combat like you're at a friend's house and the parents started arguing. And Fury of the Small, where you get to punch below the belt and make the enemy's voice go up as many octaves as your player level. <laughs> now that's the general idea of what goblins are supposed to be in the Forgotten Realms, but this is D&D, which means everybody breaks the rules more than an episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! And the fact that goblins are so adaptable to so many situations and environments means that there's no limit to how they can be portrayed or what they can be used for. You can make them mindless monsters that fill the last few empty rooms of a dungeon. The green goblin. <laughs> I was just saying, I was like, look at I'm like, wait a second. Damn it, Willem Dafoe, what are you doing here? The one on the right looks like it's very specifically from something, too. Like, I, that kind of looks like, uh... It's like Hop Goblin. Uh, yeah, it kind of does. Uh, the Shadows Goblin. Like, there's a stealth game where you play as a Goblin Rogue. Uh, now I forgot his name. Styx, I think. Styx. I think that's his name. Hmm. Is that his name? I don't know. Don't look at me. Styx. Goblin. Goblin. Yeah, Styx, Master of Shadows. Yeah. Styx, Master of Shadows. Okay, cool or adorable little scamps that the party will adopt the instant they see them, or design them so unexpectedly attractive that it'll make people question if they discovered a new fetish, or if it was there all along and this was just its awakening. You too That's, can uh, throw an like, uh, reincarnated as a I knew you were gonna bring that up! <laughs> Why? Because they start out as regular goblins, but once he names them and they evolve, like, the girl goblins get weirdly hot, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> uh, guess I've gotta check that one out. <laughs> it's a till, good one. Wait till you see the lizard girl get named. It's just like, okay. <laughs> yeah. It, it's like, Jesus, man. She goes from being like, you know, a furry person to like looking Sca pretty much human. She goes from like, being a scaly to a like really hot, like really hot, like humanoid with like dragon, Kunoichi. like with like, yeah, with like, uh, 
I'd say like dragon newt features. She has like wings. But yeah. Other than that, she's pretty human. The supply of XP at your party while giving them conflicting feelings on stomping on an innocent little cutie pie that was just minding its own business and just wanted a little bit of love. <laughs> Isn't that right, you sweetie petite? Oh, oh, son of a bitch. I knew that would happen. <laughs> knew it. What did he say at the end there? Sorry. <laughs> son of a bitch. Just minding its own business and just wanted a little bit of love. Isn't that right, you sweetie oh. petite? Oh, son of a bitch. And now you know how to use goblins. Okay. Booyah! <laughs> Booyah! Booyah! <laughs> Now he's added the goblin plush G on a shelf. On yes. The top of he's got every class here and then goblin. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's three of those. And uh, next one we'll do three more, uh, which then the last one, which is Dungeon Master. So, yeah. But Barbarian again. Because, you know, they, had, they just had to, you know, retcon and rebuild Barbarian for some reason. We'll get we'll get there. We'll get we'll get to that uh, the next time. But for right now, damn, that was a good. Those are some good crap guides to D and D, uh, Mr. Joe Cat. Every and, time I watch these, it makes me really want to go sit down and write my campaign, and yet it never happens. I'm telling you, man, just just running a module first time is so much easier. But I've already done that. Like, well, not for anybody in the group that I'll probably be playing with. But yeah. Maybe that's what I should do, is just grab us a module for everybody to get together and play, and then I can start writing after I'm motivated from playing a module. Well, so you just got, you know, when it, when you're supplying everything, it's so much harder, especially if you guys are going to try and record it. Mm -hmm. Potentially, yeah. Um, gosh. You know, now that we've got that lighting set up back there, maybe we need to hang that over top of the table that's and have, cool. and have just like, just like, you enter a lush forest, green. And it's just like, suddenly, a fire breaks out. And then very slowly, you start seeing, like, orange start to come in. It's like, oh, Jesus. Uh, but, all right. The the whole deal with uh, with d and I'm still a noob at it. I'm still very much a noob. I've created multiple characters now, and I've ran... I've ran like some pseudo campaigns on D and D Beyond, but I've just I've I'm still very new at it, and I and I'm just looking at all this, and I would be overwhelmed if I was just like I was just like, but I have some experienced D and Ders right here who basically know the game very well, and it's like I'll just put my faith in them because like. Unless they're really malicious, they're not gonna lead me lead me astray. I've had a lot of characters die. Like I'm fine with dying. That doesn't bother me. Eh, I'm, I expect it. I would expect it to die. Have you ever heard of a game called Dark Souls? Uh, actually, I sponsored uh, <laughs> Steinhardt's Guide on Kickstarter, which is D and D inspired by Dark Souls. Uh, have you played like Dark Souls? Um, no, I don't think I want to, though. I, I get. <laughs> but you said you're fine with dying. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, like, in d and D. I I don't want to <laughs> sit there and die over and over. Like, I got really frustrated with Tears of the Kingdom, okay? Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn. It's like, I died like 30 times the first couple days I was playing. Mm. Did you not get the timing for the backflip so down on Breath of the Wild? I mean... Well, I never played Breath of the Wild. Oh, that's yeah. right, yeah. Well, when I first started Breath I mean, well, of the Wild, it was frustrating. I, I, I played a little bit of Breath of the Wild. It took, me, it took me a little bit to get into it. I mean, like, I've literally talked to people who are like, I never once killed a Lionel in Breath of the Wild. They're like, really? Like, really? Like, like, I tried it, like, Dark Souls, and, like, now like, now that I could kill Lionels in Breath of the Wild, like, it's nothing. Like, starting Tears of the Kingdom, it's not hard right. at all. Oh, no, no. It, yeah, it, I remember when I, when I first came across a Lionel, I got my shit pushed in, but... You know what? That's that's part of the learning process. Also, once I saw it online too, I was like, I'm gonna get down parrying them stupid fucking lasers from. Oh, the something. guardians. Yeah. So now, like, when I see a guardian, I'm just like, all right, do it, do it. Bow, ha, get fucked. <laughs> uh, also, I love that the guardian, like the piano thing at the beginning. The. Ding, 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 ding. I love that. That's that's like a scary meme now. Hold on, let's see. Uh, hold on. Uh. Thankfully, the Guardians don't really show up at the beginning of Tears of the Kingdom that I've seen. I know it's... 
Ah, damn it. Where are you? Oh, uh, okay. B O T W. Oh, B O T. Yeah. yeah. Uh, search. Yeah, there was a guy who did a uh, who did like this hilarious uh, hilarious short where it's just a. Uh, it's a Yeah, but every time I hear, yeah, every time I hear this, I'm just like, I'm like, ah! <laughs> where is it? Where is it? Uh, hold on. There it is. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. This is this is one of my favorites. Seen that before? Yeah, this is one of my favorite. YouTube, like, one of my favorite shorts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> That'd be horrifying. <laughs> you scared shitless, dude. Yeah. I was like, who would expect that? Like, who would... Like you just, just like all of a sudden, it's like. Uh, yeah, I always think about shit like that whenever I'm waiting on the garage door to close. Like, something better not come crawling underneath that before it closes. <laughs> and the one time you look back and you see it, you see like the. It's like a crackhead crawling in. Hell no. It's like, huh? Sheesh! I'm never. Okay. That's enough. That's enough chicanery for now. We're gonna end uh, in the video here. So thank you once again, everyone, uh, for being patient with us, and also thank you, Joe Cat, for uh, for being awesome and uh, you know producing these videos, and also you know just you know finally warming up to people reacting to your stuff and you know just letting us letting us react to it because a lot of the fan a lot of our fans were very like adamant that they wanted to see us react to this. So, until next time, everybody, signing off, I'm Nate. I am Nick. Michael. See you later, everybody. Peace.